here is back for the double rt boxing show this is a breakdown and prediction for the ibf super flyweight bout taking place on the 18th on the it's gonna i believe it's the carl frampton undercard this bout is between the champion jerwin akahas taking on jamie conlin this should be a very interesting fight. You got Jerwin who has good power. Good power. And then you got Jamie who has taken his fair share of war fear. It is going to be the fight where Jamie's goes through it one more time and prevails through the war, through through the, the trenches of battle, or just a one time where Jamie can't handle the firepower. Like I said, this is for Jerwin's IBF super flyweight belt. Uh, Jamie is 19-0 and 0 with 11 KOs. He's ranked number 39 in the world, number four by the IBF. He's a 5'7". He's 31 years old. Now to Jerwin, who is the IBF champion, he's number he's number seven in the world. He's a 27 and one and one with 18 KOs. So right there shows you the power differentials, but also gonna be the way they fight, which I'm gonna get into. Uh, he's 25 years old to, to 31. Had a little bit of youth on his side. He's 5'6 with a 66 inch reach. I couldn't find Jamie's reach. Now, so you got the power, 21 wins, 18 KOs, 27 wins, I'm sorry, 18 KOs. He's number seven in the world against number 39 in the world. So you gotta, you get a little fill out for that right there. The power, 27, 18 KOs, 19 and 0, 11 KOs, number seven versus number 39 good little parameter of where this fight is now as like I said it's, this, this fight to me is all about power versus movement the boxer versus the bra the, the puncher I guess the, the boxer versus the puncher bra, boxer when, and with Jamie being the boxer and Jerwin being the puncher boxer to me so being that the breakdown we're gonna go with the feet and legs Jamie Jamie relies more for his uh his steps are good he gets himself in good position for proper punching but he more relies on his legs in the category to move him around the ring keep keep the keep the gap he has a good jab so he uses his legs to help control that keep his fire keep his opponent off rhythm constantly changing their feet while Jerwin uses his feet more than his legs he can use his legs to uh, change spot to spot on defensively if, if he feels he's getting pressure he could give himself some rooms hop back on defense you know a hop or a, a little you know a little hop aways but mainly while Jamie uses his legs to use ring generalship and uh, reset his opponent's feet Jerwin uses his feet to constantly give himself he's always dipping from side to side on angles just creating punches and that's why his punches seem to pack so much power that he's giving himself an uh, equal uh, opening that's a high chance of landing he's his, so his angles he creates a high opportunity to open lane for his punches so that's very very tough because like I said they each use that attribute really good for their game plans Jerome with his angles on his feet while Colin uses his feet for positioning, but mainly his legs to always be on the move and constantly reset. So I'm going to give that category to Jamie for the fact that 
it could be used for offensive and defensively. Why Jerwin to me uses his legs in a more beneficial way for offense. You know, it, it kind of takes a step back on defense, where I believe Jamie's does good on offense and really beneficial for defense purposes. So he gets that one. And then leading into the defense, Jamie gets hit a lot. You know, they always say, you always hear the commentators like, oh, now we're in a Colin fight, now we're in a Jamie fight. It's never a good thing to be known to take a punch. That's not good. Like, Jamie is a flyweight version of Robert Garcia, the ghost Robert Garcia. He's known for going to wars. He's known for taking good hits, swelling up. And what's even worse, he has a worse reputation than Robert Guerrero because Robert Guerrero didn't get dropped until his last like two years of his career. Jamie is getting dropped in multiple fights having to get himself off the ground to remain undefeated. And you can only get blasted like that so many times. Because when he gets hit on his defense, it's like, it's from a wear down exhaustion. He gets beat up so much and he just like breaks down. And you can tell he really has to like fight himself, like get through it. Whereas, uh, like I said, even though he gets hit a lot, he, he slips the punches his defense his defense is his legs how how much can he keep moving how much can he control that gap with his jab and his inside he hold a little bit but he's a fighter he likes to throw threes combinations move around the ring and make you chase him so he can get you off center you know, get get your feet off um get your feet off um center and then he's going to hit you when you're off balance and we set you again that's his defense as for Jerwin so he could his defense is more of a he's he's going to be fighting if he's not switching angles on your offense he's doing one of these you know taking steps he's never really stationary in front of you for too long so he's he's like that while, while Jamie uses his legs to keep you reset it Jerwin just uses his feet to do it, you know, constantly back and forth, doing one of these numbers, you know, and once in a while, like, if, if you put some pressure on um, Jerwin, he'll, he'll do the hop back, and then he'll go back to just moving, so, and then, as far as slipping punches, I give it to Jerwin's better, because I said, Jamie gets hit a lot, so defensively, I'm going to go with Jerwin. No. The arm category, they both got some pretty good punches. They both do good work. Jab for jab. I'm going to go with Jamie on this one. I think Jamie has more of a a control round jab, while Jerwin's jab is more of a setup, a jab to set up his combinations. You know, he'll blind you and then he comes in with something. While Jamie, jab is <laughs> to keep you where you're at. Jab, jab, jab. While Jerwin's like, okay, blind you, here I come. So jab for jab, I'm going to go with Jamie. Power for power, I'm going with this one power shot. I'm going with Jerwin. Speed variation, who changes up the, who throws the better setup punches. I think Jerwin does a better job at that. He'll throw you two softballs to knock you out on a third punch. Where Jamie, I think, kind of throws all sixes or sevens, and then he skates around again. Um, combination variation, they both could, could throw a, like a hook, a hook to uppercut, a double up on a hook, a jab to a hook. They they both do a good job of mixing up their punches. They both got good body work game, but if I'm going to choose who has a better variation, whose punches are the least predictable of what's to come, I'm going to go with Jerwin, does a better job at variations on the combinations and the speed. So power, speed, and combination variation, I go with Jerwin. 
Uh, who is the favorite in this fight? I really don't know. I know they're fighting in Belfast. I believe they are. If there's a car, Frampton undercard. I, I, I believe they are. I'm not too sure where they're fighting at, but it's going to be, I would think, Jamie Collin might be a hometown favorite, I think. I could be wrong on this one. But how can he win? I think his movement, as good as Jerwin is, he kind of has to be... His power is ready. It's there when he's ready to unleash it. If he has to track Jamie down, his power won't be as much. So Jamie's going to have to control the gap with his jab get his points and mix up the combination either start high finish low finish or start high finish low mix it up and bad just don't don't be predictable with his with his combinations where Jerwin could time and counter him and don't be there too long and move change up stay behind the jab use ring generalship and show head movement. Now, as far as Jerwin, Jerwin's gonna have to jab himself and break. I believe Jamie might have a, a longer reach, so I believe Jamie, Jerwin is gonna have to jab himself in. Whether it's a double jab, triple the jab, um, faint. Get himself in and then start working Jamie's body and like really try and muscle Jamie around because Jamie wants to move. So work the body, must get him against the ropes, make him use the, more energy and, and, and work behind a jab. Now, like I said, I think Jamie might be fair just because he's a hometown. Now my prediction is I'm, I, I went back and forth on this prediction so many times I didn't. Uh, because part of me think Jamie's feet and legs can be good enough where it could reset Jerwin. I really, I really do. I think Jamie could pull this off. But I just seen, I seen him get hit too many times and too many times off the ground. And I just, thought, I think this might be the one time where he can't get himself off the ground. Wait. He could get himself off the ground, but I don't think he's going to be able to get himself off the ground and come back and win this fight. I think he's going to be down on points, or it's going to be a back and forth fight. Usually, when he gets himself off the ground, he's pretty much had enough rounds in the bag where he was able to still coast out a victory. I don't know if he's going to have that many bags early enough on Jerwin to where he could get himself off at a 10 8 round, a 10 7 round, and still come back and win. So I'm going with Jerwin Acasa on a unanimous decision. Maybe knocking Colin down about two times, if not once, and retaining his IBF super flyweight belt. Jerwin Acasa, Jerwin Acasa remains the IBF super flyweight champ. It is super flyweight, yes. Thumbs up and thank you for your time and support.